Today, I'm really excited to announce Copilot Actions, Copilot Analytics. Windows app is coming to Android, Windows 365 link. Hey guys, today we're gonna to cover all the Microsoft 365 highlights from Microsoft Ignite, a conference that you can spend $5,000 to attend to listen to Microsoft shove Copilot down your throat for three days straight. So a lot of cool announcements coming out. So let's go ahead and dive in with this quick five minute highlight reel. We're gonna kick off with some of those Copilot highlights, including Microsoft's dedicated focus on confusing the entire world with their branding and licensing by now converting the Office 365 app logos to a central Microsoft 365 Copilot logo, even if you don't have Copilot licensing. So not only are we getting that sweet Copilot logo on our hardware and on our desktop icons, but now we also have to talk to our customers about why the Word application has a Copilot badge in the corner. Fun times ahead. This branding comes with new announcements of AI agents, which are effectively pre-packaged agents you can consume in various apps like a facilitator agent in Teams or an AI agent in SharePoint dedicated to answering questions about documents in a repository. One of those agents that caught more popularity was the new interpreter agent in Teams, which provide users the capability to translate live on a call. We need to review the progress of the project. Can you please tell us how the tasks we should take are going? They also made announcements around Copilot Actions, which leverages a predefined prompt you can use for scheduling actions like summarizing your inbox every day or requests for status updates. They're coupling all of these Copilot updates with Copilot Analytics, so you can tie Copilot usage with business KPIs to show the higher ups in your organization that this product isn't a total waste of money at this point in time. For Copilot PCs, they're introducing some new integrated capabilities, including the ability to surface resources like documents and pictures, simply based on contextual search versus needing to know the exact name of the file and folder. We are also seeing more of the popular consumer grade features coming out, like being able to click into photos to find visual elements on the web, improve overall photo resolution, and provide advanced photo editing capabilities. I can finally replace all my ugly friends with dogs in my photos. Microsoft Recall, the now famous privacy oversight on Microsoft's part, will be disabled by default. Took a little longer than I would have thought for that one. Team Super Resolution enhances the quality of incoming video, improving visibility of colleagues, even with weak internet connections. One of the most popular releases was Microsoft's introduction of a new PC called Windows 365 Link, which is a new device dedicated to Windows 365 Cloud PC connections. This is meant to act as a new thin client and is also locked down for security settings by default. This device is certainly gaining a lot of initial scrutiny, but can be very useful for specific workloads like hot desk and dedicated workflows that just use Microsoft 365 apps, given no other apps may be installed on the device. Expanding Windows 365, Windows 365 Frontline is expanding its capabilities with the public preview of Shared Mode. The new mode offers organizations even more options by providing cloud PC access to multiple users with a non-personalized desktop experience. This is effectively what the new Windows 365 Link device is promoting as well. Lastly, for Windows 365, they are also introducing more mobile application management capabilities for iPad, iOS, and Android devices, where users can connect securely to their corporate resources from their BYOD devices. Shifting into some security updates, Microsoft announced a new Windows Resiliency Initiative in response to the CrowdStrike incident earlier this year, which brought down over 8.5 million devices. This initiative highlights some key changes coming, such as being able to make key updates to machines without physical access, running AV processes outside the kernel, and enforcing more strict requirements on partners like CrowdStrike so they follow more rigid deployment practices. Also announced was Hot Patch for Windows, which is enterprise devices as far as the scope goes, and it allows IT admins to deploy patches to devices without requiring a restart. A very cool announcement was also made around administrator protections, which would allow local users of devices to actually self-service application installs or updates that requires them to authenticate via phishing resistant methods like Windows Hello before those are deployed. Microsoft also announced a new in-person hacking event posed to be even larger than events like Black Hat with over $4 million in prizes at stake. Shifting into some of the latest security enhancements to Edge, 
That includes Scareware Blocker, which uses machine learning to help detect for Scareware on a web page and share a warning with the user. And lastly, Microsoft is also introducing and allowing admins to deploy encrypted shared passwords across users so that they can securely access them in the browser without ever seeing the actual password. Okay guys, that's everything I had for the highlights there. Definitely check out my blog in the description of this video for more helpful information about all those announcements. And I'll see you guys next week.